Hello, everyone. I'm Alan Potcotter, and you're listening to Call Talk for November 2nd, 2022. Today's topic is how great frontline support creates great agents, how-to tip. If you're listening live, we invite you to be part of the show and ask questions. Here's how you do it. You can email me at calltalk at benchmarkportal.com. I want to remind everyone that all of our shows are archived and available to listen to at Benchmark Portal any time of the day. And now with that, I would like to introduce the host of the show, Steve Belfiore. Thank you all, and welcome back to Call Talk, everyone. I'm really happy to have an old friend on the program, Mark Brody. Welcome, Mark. How are you doing? I am doing well, Bruce. Thank you very much for having me today. Good. Well, I'm glad you're on. And uh, there may be a little background noise there, so when you're not talking, we might ask you to put it on uh, on uh, a mute, but uh, I'm sure it'll be fine. So for, for our listeners who don't already know him, Mark Brody is a contact center industry veteran, who in addition to his position as CEO and president of Brohawk Solutions, based in Austin, Texas, is also president of the Austin Contact Center Alliance, which is a nonprofit organization which brings the Austin area contact center community together for regular events and information. And uh, I've been to the ACCA annual conference a few times as speaker, one time as keynoter, and it's a great group of people they have there uh, in Austin. And I should also mention that Mark is a columnist for the Contact Center Pipeline. So we're going to be talking about a number of things with regard to frontline agents and the contact center in general, sort of getting it unstuck in this post-COVID era and uh, some of the the techniques and some of the tips that uh, uh, Mark has for us as contact center managers. So before we get into the contact uh, about how great frontline support creates great frontline agents, and now that I've introduced you as guru and a, a long-term Methuselah <laughs> of the industry, how have you seen contact centers having evolved over the course of your career? Just give our our uh, listeners a little a little bit of a perspective from your point of view. Yeah, um, you know, Bruce. Uh, thank again. Thank you very much for for having me on. Um, I, I could. Uh, geek out about contact centers for like hours upon hours. And I know we only have limited time uh, today, but one of the things that, that um, I remember when I first started in this industry 32 plus years ago um, was that everything was, had to be done um, more manually than what it, what it uh, is, what currently occurs today. And, the the frontline agent was really viewed as um, a member of a cost center as opposed to um, a value add center, as I would prefer to to um, to re- look at the the call center today or the contact center today. And so, you know, back back in the day, you know, it was okay. How many calls can you take? And you know, are we hitting our metrics? And it was, everything was so numbers driven. Not that it isn't today. Um, but today you have to balance out um, not just the numbers, but also the people more so than anything, uh, more so than anything, because there's so many options out there uh, for, you know, frontline agents to, uh, uh, to go, you know, they, you know, if they don't like the culture in, in your particular contact center, you know what, there's probably one right down the road or um, another mouse click. Uh, to go ahead and join, and, and you know, back in the day, people stayed with the companies that they were that they were working for for you know three, four, five, you know, ten years at a time. Um, I recently worked for a company where, you know, my boss, you know, has now been over there, you know, thirty five years um, plus, and so you just don't see that anymore today. Um, so I think that's really how contact centers have have evolved from a personal um, sense. And I think that uh, from a from a knowledge base for the for the agent, it's less transactional and more critical thinking, more empathy uh, and compassion for the the folks that are having to, that, that are calling in because there's so many other channels that they could uh, that they could use. So when you actually get somebody on the phone um, or via chat, it's a real problem um, that that person is encountering. And so 
you have to really support your frontline agents with the tools and and resources that they need to be able to handle anything that may come their way versus, you know, back 30 years ago, it was a lot more transactional. Yeah, no, that's that's for sure. And, I, you know, I think of the fact that uh, the metrics are being used differently today. And, of course, we deal with tons of metrics at Benchmark Portal. And we see that whereas there were a lot, there was a lot of emphasis on simply reducing handle time, for example. Now, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, we we take a little bit of credit for this because we've been pushing the idea of a balanced scorecard of uh, metrics that take into account the human side and the customer satisfaction and agent satisfaction side, along with the. Uh, uh, you know, the, the efficiency side. So, yeah, you, you really yeah. have to have those things uh, in sync. You have to understand them. And you, the other thing is that you have to make sure that your people understand it, too, why there, there yeah. are those metrics and what they mean and how uh, squeezing too much on one metric may have something pop out somewhere else that's really very bad for your, your customer service. So, yeah, I, so I, I, true. I agree with you that. Yeah, no, sorry, you're very, very true. And yeah, I was I was going to say, Bruce. You know, the 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 thing with that is that you know when you when you squeeze something too hard, um, something at the other end is going to pop out and explode, and it's going to have that un that undesired uh, result. And that could be, um, you know, your your agents are getting burned out, um, you know, because people are are focusing more at, more on, you know, average call to, or average handle time in their they're not looking at occupancy as as a measure of burnout, as an as an example. Uh, right. So being taking taking a look at at the metrics that are out there um, to help make those those data driven decisions is so so important. Yeah, no, that's for sure. And and so, where are you seeing uh, things getting stuck, and uh, how are you seeing them through best practices getting unstuck? in a way that could actually help our listeners to do a better job in their job? Yeah. Um, great question, Bruce. You know, the, I, I think where people have gotten stuck and I'll, I'll, I'll use uh, the last two and a half years um, from a pandemic uh, perspective, you know, there were so many contact centers um, back in 2019 that would say, there's no way we're going to be, um, we're going to, um, you know, be remote. And then, you know, that, that, that weekend in, in March of 2020 and everybody had to pivot home. Um, and I think that really created some opportunities for organizations to really understand where some of their gaps were. You couldn't just, um, um, you know, I'm going to use the term from back in the day, uh, MBWA, um, management by walking around. You couldn't do that as easy, um, yep. Yep. you know, uh, in, in the remote environment. And so it really, I, I think the the biggest thing that came out of that was the need to really recognize how to be a good human. Um, and that performance, because you couldn't manage by walking around and, um, you know, tell somebody, hey, you just need to start getting back on the phone. You know, you were at your break too long. You know, there are so many external factors that were impacting a, a person's performance. Um, it could have been, you know, the fact that they were trying to teach second grade at the same time of trying to do their job. Um, you know, there were so many, there were so many factors that, that were, um, that were um, impacting performance. Um, and I think that, that leaders, uh, contact center leaders have had to recognize how to balance out um, being human and um, in being efficient um, and being productive, um, and it, it's it's hard to do for for some organizations. You know, you have you have these tools, you have a lot of technology tools like Slack, or and I'm not I'm not advocating any one of them. So, um, you know, please don't take an uh, you know take that as a as a, an advocation of of one. But you have Slack, you have Teams, you have you know any of these chat um, chat tools that are out there. And yes, you can go ahead and, and just check in on people and everything, but you know, creating that interpersonal um, that interpersonal connection was where a lot of contact centers were getting stuck in the beginning. 
I think over the last couple of years um, or the last year or so, people have started to figure it out. Um, you know, that it's not just about having that, that chat conversation, but it's also being able to provide that live support um, for, for agents. And so you see a lot more AI tools, a lot of agent assist tools that are, that are coming out so that if, if a manager or a supervisor or an escalation desk is not available at the time that the, that the agent needs it, there are these tools that are working in the background that can, that can help um, support them as well. And, you know, that's where, that's, that, that's the biggest area I, I felt that people were really getting, getting stuck in. Right. You know, I, one of the things that uh, come to, came to mind while you were talking is that a lot of this has to do with mindset, and a lot of it will end up going back to leadership, the kind of leadership qualities and techniques that, uh, you know, we advocate for the exact mm -hmm. kinds of people who listen to, to this uh, program. So hopefully, uh, you know, there's that, that old quote from Rahm Emanuel, which is, don't let any good Christ go to waste. <laughs> yeah. And so that's, that's saying don't just be reactive, which we all had to be in, in March of 2020, uh, 2020 mm -hmm. but be proactive. You know, say, okay, yep. what is it that I can learn from this? What is it that I can do with this? And, of course, a lot of centers have, have learned how to be more human and create community even among people who aren't in the same room. And it's not necessarily all day, always easy. And I'd be interested in a little bit more of your thoughts on it because, um, you know, I, I was reading an article in the Wall Street Journal just the other day that some mm -hmm. organizations now have a manager of remote remote workforce optimization. So they are, this person's job is to uh, focus on making sure that remote people are happy and productive and doing what they need to do and uh, being loyal and uh, staying with the company. So any thoughts on that? Yeah, actually I, I do. I, I think that it's incumbent upon every leader to understand um, honestly what, what a person's um, vision for their future looks like. Um, so when I'm talking frontline agents, um, what is that frontline agent? What's their vision for progression through the organization? and really create that individual individualized roadmap with your with your team and with individuals on an individual basis to understand where they see themselves kind of navigating and, and progressing. Um, and, you know, oftentimes, um, you know, pre-pandemic, pre you know, you know, you could sit down and you could really have some, uh, some really good conversations, um, you know, face to face, but being able to do this in a remote environment um, is so important. Um, you know, and understanding what the what the agent is actually seeing and hearing um, on each customer interaction, whether it's voice, um, uh, whether it's uh, you know chat or email or hell, if you if your uh, if your organization uses carrier pigeons, you know, for communication. I mean. Um, what is it that that agent is seeing that can go ahead and help out the um, help out the organization become better and, and be smarter on how calls are, are how interactions are, are occurring? And so, um, getting that that voice of the customer sense from the employee, from the voice of the employee, is mm -hmm. so so mission critical. Um, you know to um, to kind of leveraging the the knowledge that's there um, with your with your agents and and by recognizing hey I'm a I'm a frontline agent but I can add a lot of value to the organization um, having that 360 um, um, you know feedback loop with your agents that are saying hey this this is this is a problem okay and it's causing us to have a lot of calls and most of my calls over the past week have dealt with this issue or that issue. Um, and as that escalates up, actually having the, the, the leadership team listen and, you know, take action and then provide feedback and recognition um, for, Hey, this is something that, that came, that bubbled up from, uh, from what y'all were saying. And this is, this is what we're doing to go ahead and, um, and fix this. 
Mm. Yeah, you know, uh, I'm, I'm glad you brought up that this is a whole channel, Mark, that we have not benchmarked before, courier pigeon. Uh, Alan, I think we've yeah, got to do a benchmark on courier pigeon going forward. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, yeah, they're, they're, wild, they're wild little beasts. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I had not heard that. We try to do omni channel, you know. We try to do all the benchmarking, yep. but uh, yep. that's one we haven't got to yet. So, thanks for bringing that mm-hmm. to our attention. And you know, the, the feedback yeah, that we're talking about is so important. And what you said about having the leadership team listen and recognize what's going on. And when you say listen, you don't just mean necessarily listening to people talking about it, but actually listening to the interactions that show that this is uh, necessary in terms of or that it's uh, ripe for attention, ripe for proactive uh, action, and maybe uh, deserves more technology or more uh, process con- control, that sort of thing, correct? Yep. Exactly. I mean, you know, back when when I started, um, if if a if a manager, director, or vice president wanted to know, hey, how many of these call types um, are we getting uh, today? And what would be the first thing that that a supervisor would come out on the floor and say, hey, can you go ahead and and keep some tick marks, and I'll come by and pick them up in about an, in about fifteen minutes or or an hour or something like that, or turn them in at the end of your shift. Now with technology, especially the AI technology that can key in on certain words or create those sound clouds or those word clouds um, of what the key things that people are saying, you can create that synergy between what your agents are saying is a problem and what your customers are actually calling in about. And so there's, there becomes a, a situation where there's no gray area um, about um, you know, where improvement needs to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, that's great stuff. And uh, without revealing any names of clients or anything like that, can you sort of give a uh, use situation where uh, this was the case and where uh, some some sort of technology or process improvement made a difference or training? Yeah. So you know, there was there was a client I, I was I was working with, um, you know, back a a couple of years ago, and they. They kind of, um, you know, took a look at, at um, you know, they had this one day of the year that was their volume was like, you know, 10% of their entire volume for the entire year. I mean, it was it was a massive day for them. And when things would go wrong, they would ask people to help understand through um, through tick marks. Um you know, why people were calling in, what were the main things that they were concerned about. And what they were finding was that, you know, at day later when they collected all the tick marks, um, that it was it was a marketing initiative or something that, that didn't quite work the way that it was supposed to on that particular day or in, in days leading up or, or immediately after. Um, and so they started taking a look at the at, at, at technology. Um, and and really understanding um, the the sentiment and the, and the frustration that the that the agents were were having to deal with, and what they what they realized is, hey, part of the problem is that people were frustrated because they were in queue too long, uh, they weren't getting their questions answered, and so there was an initi- an initiative the following year. We need to go ahead and um, um, augment our staff. Um, so that if something does go wrong, then we need to be able to um, um, increase our, our our staff, increase the people that are available to take calls, um, so that the 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 customer that's waiting on hold isn't waiting on hold for 10, 20, 30, 40 minutes because right. they were typically hanging up and then calling right back in. And so, you know, that that was – you know, intuitively, um, you know, yes, having people on hold for that long is bad, um, but they were able to actually put some some data to it, um, to um, you know, based on what people were saying and and the sentiment that they were uh, that they were bringing to the conversations. 
Yeah. No, that's, that's where uh, technology and even some perhaps targeted outsourcing uh, can be very, yes. very useful for people. And, uh, yeah, we've talked to, to clients about those situations and uh, anybody who needs to uh, have you know, more information on that. And you know, one of the yep. things, too, that, Mark, you and I have uh, talked about a bit in the past is that sometimes there's a hyper-focus on certain buzzwords at senior levels. Um, yep. And, uh, but they don't always get adopted. Uh, and can you just talk about that sort of lead lag uh, component? You already have a little bit, but let's just dive into that a little bit more because I think that's the kind of thing that can bedevil uh, a lot of our listeners. Yeah, so – I think when when people get um, get get hyper focused on um, you know the, these buzzwords like customer experience, um, uh, you know, and CX is is the thing that's out there. Everybody's talking about it these days, um, and they get so focused on the customer experience that they forget about the impact that it's having to um, to the employee, and so. You know what I talk to what I'll talk to companies about is, you know, you really need to go ahead and have alignment between your people, your processes, and your technology, um, because if you don't, you're going to have a um, an ineffective employee experience, and what what does that usually lead to? Uh, a very horrible um, customer experience, and so just focusing at, at one end of the spectrum or the other end of the spectrum, you, you lose a lot in the middle, and so. Um, you'll see, you'll, you'll see, um, you know, companies go ahead and say, I'll, I'll put together this, this, uh, this, uh, this committee or this, this work group to go ahead and tackle this aspect. But if they're only working in a silo and only focusing on the customer th- through the customer lens and forgetting about how, what the employee is doing and seeing and being and, and, and sharing how that's, um, impacting, um, the uh, the customer experience they're 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 missing it, um, yeah. and 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 I see that you know far too often. Well, you know the silo busting that you just mentioned, I think is extremely extremely important. Something we've advocated for for decades at this point, mm-hmm. and uh, you know you, you need to have that cross fertilization. How many situations? Uh, can our listeners think of where basically IT has been tasked coming up with the right technology for something, and nobody has even yep. asked them, or, or much less asked the agents about it, or had them do, you know, say, uh, let's do a pilot first, and let's uh, have our people, you know, try it out, speak it, and talk about it. Um, I think that the uh, sort of pulling in information from as many sources as possible is, is an important thing to do. You know, it's interesting you you, you mentioned that um, it's from an IT perspective, especially. Um, you see a lot of um, a lot of technology, um, you know, vendors really fo- really hyper focused on the CTO space and the technology space but they sometimes forget about how this is going to impact the end user. And so I, I had the opportunity a, a, a few years back um, to go ahead and um, help launch a new line of business for a company I was working for. And one of the things that uh, we needed is we needed to figure out, um, did we, could we build a, um, a servicing system or a system that could accommodate everything that that this new line of business was expected to handle and so i worked with our our product marketing our product development people and our it people and we developed something but the 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 key to it was the first four agents that i was bringing into this new line of business i wanted them as my user my user testers was this going to be something that was going to get them to the information that they knew the the customer was going to be needing um, as quickly as possible, and so when when you're looking at technologies, it's important to get that feedback from your frontline agents. Is this really going to make their life better, or is it going to make it more complex? Is it going to make it um, more challenging to get to the data that that they're actually going to need? And I, I recently heard back from from this company, and they said uh, um, that they're still using that that uh that database that system that was created 10 plus years ago um 
in some of their business offerings uh, today. And so I was like, oh, my legacy lives on. So. <laughs> Is that a good feeling? <laughs> sometimes it, it is, sometimes it, it, that's fine. <laughs> exactly. Hey, if it works, I'm happy. If it doesn't work, uh, you know, what, what did, what did y'all do with it? So. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah no, you got that right. Well, that's good. Uh, well, we're, we're, we're starting to get to the end of our time together here, uh, Mark, but I just wanted to give you an opportunity to uh, uh, share any further thoughts that you have or final thoughts with regard to our topic. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think I think most importantly, um I, I think I think companies really need to be um hyper focused on um on behaviors, not not the results. Um the results will happen, but if the wrong behaviors are occurring on on custo- during customer interactions, they're not being trained properly um you know from the onboarding uh process. You could have an agent that scores five out of five on every single call um, versus an agent that's only scoring three out of five, but taking 25% more interaction. Now, some companies will look at that and say, oh, well, this person's more productive because they're, they're doing more. And I would say, you know, the behaviors that are occurring with that, cut, with that agent that are, that's scoring five out of five, um, he's not creating – additional calls that need to be taken that are going to be queuing up for us. So it's important for, for companies to really look at the, um, the behaviors that are occurring that are leading to um, better customer satisfaction, um, better agent satisfaction, um, and, and really talking about those um, with their team as opposed to just the person that's putting the, the, the biggest numbers on the board. And, you know, at the same time, you know, rethinking quality. I think that's so important as well. You know, get out of the checkbox mentality. Is this agent exhibiting the behaviors that, that are leading to um, the results? And, you know, provide some, um, uh, provide some, feed, some behavioral um, uh, feedback um, and coaching based on uh, calls that are being observed. Um, not necessarily. Hey, did you say did you say the customer's name fifteen times during this conversation? Um, did you say hello and goodbye and, and call them by their first name or you know whatever the case may be? Um, but really focus on you know is is the agent um, you know exhibiting the behaviors that are going to lead to the best results and fewer calls down the road? So that would be my that would be my my ending. That's great. No, that's fabulous. And uh, actually yeah. leads into something that we found out during the pandemic that we had extra time. So uh, we might, we, um, and you might put your mic on uh, mute there just for a second, Mark. Um, okay. We uh, created something called uh, Learning Channel, and uh, which people can see on our website and uh, by going to Learning Channel. And it's basically a series of over 30 at this point videos. Uh, to help uh, call center agents do a better job. And there's uh, all these topics, including active listening, uh, controlling the call, um, avoiding a monotone uh, response, et cetera, et cetera. There's all, all kinds of great stuff. We had no idea how much appetite there was for this. The uh, the, the, the downloads, the, the uh, use of these videos has just exploded and uh, we've been asked actually to turn it into a, a product, uh, which we, which you've done. And so this need for uh, sort of coaching that helps out with the problems that you're talking about is is great. And there's oftentimes a need for more than one way to to get the message across to people. So it's not that the message hasn't been brought out in initial training. Uh, it's not that there hasn't been attempts to coach, but in many cases, people learn different ways and they need to have things repeated, but not necessarily always the same way. So it's just interesting to see this as a, a need in our industry. And we've been very happy that, you know, people have found a, a value in that. So, well, Mark, listen, it's been great having you on. We really appreciate it. And uh, with that, 
Uh, and with your final words, I'd like to hand things over to Alan to, to wrap things up. So, again, thanks to Mark Brody for being with us today. Thank you for having me there, there Bruce and Alan. I, I, I've had a great time today. Great. Thank you to Mark again and to Bruce for your insightful discussion on today's show. Be sure to join us next month for another great show or look at our huge selection on hot topics or in archive shows at benchmarkportal.com. Then click on Call Talk where you'll find over 12 seasons of this show. From all of us at Benchmark Portal, keep those headsets steady and your fingers ready. This is Alan Potcotter signing out. Have a great day.